I added these breakable windows and had to take advantage of it by adding a slow-mo sequence of a zombie jumping through one of them, which you can then shotgun straight back out the window. I fixed this annoying bug where sometimes the zombie would get stuck in the scroll loop after crawling through a hole in the wall or fence. Kind of reminds me of Gollum. I added these white outlines around all of the points of interest in the map to make it easier to see what you can interact with. Then I made it so that you can earn gold when you start a wave earlier. By the way, you're watching a devlog for my indie game, They Come in Waves. Please add it to your wishlist. The link is in the description. I thought about making it so that you can earn more gold depending on how early you start the wave, but I decided to keep it simple and it's not at all because I was too lazy to implement the logic. I added a bunch of these invisible colliders to some areas that would previously let you escape the map, like at this bridge area and to the fences in the backyards of all the houses. Hopefully that'll keep all the speedrunners in check, uh, probably not though. To help me out with this, I used a tool called Ultimate Editor Enhancer which has quickly become my favorite level design tool. It's currently 50% off alongside a bunch of other Unity assets. You can find affiliate links in the description if you'd like to support my channel. The rifle needed some work because it wasn't playing sounds and you could reload it whilst aiming down sight which looked pretty wonky. It also needed a bit of a nerf because you could one shot all the zombies which is way too OP. I realized in a playtest that the zombies were way too slow so I added more running zombies that spawn instead of walking ones. Zombies now run 90% faster, which is funny because 90% of people who watch my videos aren't subscribed to my channel. Please hit that sub button. I made some animations to equip and unequip the flamethrower because it would previously just appear in your hands like you're some magician. I fixed a bunch of these text pop-ups at all the doors and wall buy points which weren't turning red when you didn't have enough money to open or buy them. I fixed an issue with the spawning of this one random zombie that would just spawn in and spin in place forever. Turns out I placed his target on an area that didn't have a valid nav mesh so he was super confused. After completing Nettie's quest she would just disappear like she had a cape of invisibility. Turns out that was also just a navigation issue. I gave her a valid exit point and now she still disappears just in a more logical place. In adding the ability to craft buildings, I managed to break the crafting menu for weapon crafting. So I spent some time fixing that and you can build flamethrowers again. Every time I started up the game, I heard these two intense zombie screams coming from the farmhouse. Turns out I forgot to disable the farmhouse zombies which should only come to life when you open the doors to their house. The thing that caused me the biggest headache this week was definitely this shotgun reload animation which would cause the player to glitch to a new position occasionally. Turns out I accidentally left the mesh collider on the shotgun shell object that I added to the reload animation which would cause some funky collider business. After eventually fixing that, I also fixed the speed of the transition from reload to idle and vice versa that my chat pointed out during my bug fix livestream which you should totally tune into next time it happens. I fixed an annoying issue that stopped the player from moving when they turned on the generator and I also fixed another issue where the zombies would get stuck in certain areas of the map because they tried to navigate back out of the map to get to the player. I modified the navigation mesh to let them know that wasn't allowed. I added the ability to skip dialogue because I've had the same conversation with Nelly about 65,000 times and I just can't listen to her whining anymore. I messed with some color settings because my color adjustment photo was causing spark effects to look like blood splats coming out of the end of my weapon which was not ideal. The game looks a little less saturated all in all now which I think is a pretty good thing. And finally I learned that I forgot to turn on my bloom post processing filter so that messed with my lighting a bit and I'll need to fix that for the next devlog. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.